Welcome back to Joshua's Green Garage. So this is going to be the third video in my little mini series um, about this John Deere aerator spreader combination. Um, this one's just gonna be like a basic like maintenance uh, video. So the instructions tell you to do, you know, certain things um, after use of this and before putting away from the winter time, such as, you know, lubricating different things, touch up paints, you know, general cleaning it off, things like that. So I'm just gonna go over what I'm gonna do for that. Um, a lot of this is, it says in the manual to do after every use, but uh, I can't imagine everybody lubricating every time on this thing after every use, you know, spraying it down with WD-40 or whatever. Um, if it's being kept inside, it's not really necessary in my opinion. Uh, if it's gonna be kept outside, you know, if you're in an area where corrosion is a problem, you know, in, in the south where there's a lot of humidity, something like that, uh, it may be a little more apparent to do, but I'm not gonna worry about that. What I'm gonna go through today is the chain. I'm gonna uh, take the chain off, clean it off, lubricate it. I'm gonna show all that. Uh, I'm gonna add some lubrication to the auger in the inside. Um, either end has like a plastic bushing that it goes through. And uh, I just wanna put some lubricant in there to keep, uh, cause you know, if uh, fertilizer or if you're using, like I was spreading powdered lime last year, uh, it's very fine, it can get in there and then start to rub at that plastic and, you know, wear it away. And then eventually, um, you know, that auger will be able to move around in there. So I'm gonna try to keep, you know, well, prevent that from happening, you know, prematurely. Uh, I got a couple spots I'll touch up with some touch up paint. Um, so yeah, uh, tools for this, uh, we're gonna need screwdriver, flathead, I have a set of needle nose pliers and 11 millimeter socket and wrench. John Deere touch up paint. This is of course the ag green, uh, some primer, some brake clean, denatured alcohol and a rag. Uh, also I got back here, the John Deere uh, lithium multi-purpose grease, the HD complex, whatever it's called. Um, it's pretty common for all the newer tractors. Uh, they'll recommend in the manual. So I'll bring you in closer, we'll get to it. So I'm gonna start in with the uh, deepest portion of this first, and that is going to be removing this cover to expose the chain and gears. This is where you would use your 11 meter, 11 millimeter, sorry, socket and wrench to take that off. I have this taken off for a previous video, so I didn't put these on all the way again, so I'm just gonna simply pull these off real quick. I just have them on there, finger tight. So I was alarmed with how this looked um, in one of my other videos, um, you know, looking at the chain to see how tight or how loose this was. Um, it doesn't appear that there was ever any kind of lubricant on here at all. Um, the chain's got a little bit of corrosion on it. Um, it's just very dry, it looks like Maybe the lime that I had spread uh, kind of got in there. Maybe there was just a little bit of surface lube from the factory uh, and, you know, some stuck to it. But overall, uh, it's not like caked with any dirt or anything, leading me to believe that there was any significant amount of lubricant on there. So I'm going to pull you in closer and we're going to shake off the chain. So looking at this chain a little closer, in order to take it off, we're gonna have to find the master link. Now, I will admit, I already kinda did this just to make sure it all went smoothly uh, for the video. So, you know, the master link in this case looks pretty clean. It's right here. Um, you can find it pretty easy. It almost looks like another link over the end of one of the other links that's on here. Um, it's not too hard to find, but you gotta locate that. Next, I'm gonna just rotate the tines until that link is on the corner, kind of like that, of the gear. From there, I'm gonna take my pair of pliers and I'm gonna put this part of the jaw on this part of, here I'll point to it, on this part of that pin that goes through the chain and then the bottom part of the jaw will be on the end of this spring clip and then i'm just gonna close the pliers and that should pop that 
clip right off, like so. And then from there, you can simply pull it off the rest of the way. So that's your master link. Um, if you used it a season, you know, yours may look like this, um, and this wouldn't look so shiny, but that's that. From there, when I first took this off to check it out, it didn't look like, and just me pulling it out myself, I couldn't just pull that right off um, until I looked at it closely and then realized, like, I had first thought that that was actually, uh, you know, those pins were, like, peened on there and uh, that it wasn't going to come off. Um, and then I looked at it a little closer and realized it would. I just had to pull on it harder. So that's when I took pliers and then just pulled it off with the pliers. Um, it, it's not held on tight at all. It'll come off, believe me. So once you pull that link off, you can then take the rest of the chain off. You'll push that through. And you may have to actually cycle it further from this point to the back. Back here, it's open, so you'll be able to slide that link off. So now, you can push that out. And I can tell there is a little bit of lubrication on there. Just wasn't a lot. But now, your chain will come right off. And you can do whatever you need to do with it. In this case, I'm going to spray it down with some brake clean. And then uh, maybe put some penetrating oil on it, let it sit for a minute, and then put some uh, put some WD-40 or something on it. Um, I can't find my 3-in-1 oil, or I would probably put that on there. Uh, maybe when I go to actually use it, I'll put 3-in-1 on there. But for now, just to protect it, I'll put some WD-40 on it. So I'm going to move the camera and we'll spray this down so now i'm just going to take some brake clean doesn't really matter what kind i just kind of have a mix match of whatever i had laying around and i'm just going to start spraying this down trying to soak everything break some of the stuff up you don't want to do this while it's on the spreader um because brake clean will damage paint so better to do it away I also grabbed a wire brush. I'm just gonna brush it down, try to get some of the buildup on it off. And there we go. <clears throat> Kind of help dry this off real quick. And then we got a pretty nice clean chain. Looks a heck of a lot better than it did before. And I mean, you can see that was pretty quick. That brake clean does a pretty good job. I'm getting all that off there. I definitely recommend using a wire brush too like that. I know I didn't say that at the beginning of the video, but worked pretty good. All right, so now I'm gonna lay down some more paper towels and we'll spray this down with some penetrating oil just to help kind of get in between all the little links. And I didn't bring that over, let me grab that. Good old PB blaster. I'm just going to spray a coat over it. Seems like it's clogged. There we go. Alright, we'll let that sit and we'll come back to it. Now for where the chain is, the gears and whatnot, we'll try to just wipe it off with some piece of towel the best we can. I'm gonna grab my uh, denatured alcohol, put a little bit of that on the rag, kind of 
help soak up some of the debris on there. And it's not gonna be an awesome job because that gear's on there. Actually, looks like I can take the bottom off. Here's our chain. It's soaked pretty good with that penetrating oil. I'm gonna grab a new paper towel and just try to wipe any excess off. Realistically, you can leave this on there. It's not gonna hurt anything. but penetrating oil is pretty lightweight. That's how it gets into places. So we'll put WD-40, which is still light, but it's a little heavier. As I said, if I had three in one, I'd put my three in one oil on it, but I can't find it right now. So that'll probably just be something I'll add before I actually go to use this thing. So there we are. Looks a lot better than it did when we started. Now I'll just put some WD-40 on it. Actually use the spray one. And now it should be good to go. Um, again, I would prefer to use three in one and uh, you wouldn't have to really put a whole lot, but this should be sufficient just to at least protect it for now. All right, now if I, if I uh, had three in one, um, when putting this chain back on, I would drip some around that, those gears and then uh, you know, turn it around a bunch to lubricate it. Obviously, I'm not going to spray WD-40 on it as it sits now. Um, oh, man. I'm not going to spray WD-40 as it sits right now. Um, I'm just going to let it be as it is. And then uh, I'll fully lubricate it later. So, we'll take our master link again. Pull these around. And start getting that master link through. Well, I should probably do it from the back side, of course. We got our master link in there. All right, found it. We'll put that last link on. Like so. And I'll take the spring clip, put it on our pliers. I'm going to move this again to that corner. That way it's a little easier to get in from the side. Put on there. And then the way we took this off, we're going to do the same thing, putting it back on. We're just going to use this time the pliers on the opposite piece and then the opposite end of the spring clip like so hopefully my head wasn't in the way you can turn it around a few times that'll lubricate the gear a little bit but uh, it's not going to be like if you were to put some three and one directly on those gears like i said i'll do that later but that is about probably honestly the hardest part of maintenance for this um you know if you need to clean that chain um, if not just take the cover off drop some oil on it and you'll be good really it's not that big of a deal so from there just uh put your cover back on and you'll be good we'll move on to just some touch-up painting 
Now I'm just gonna run you through a couple quick touch-ups. So I have two spots here where my weight tray fell inside and then you know scratched through the paint. Um, they're not corroding at all, but uh, I figured I might as well just show a quick touch-up. There are some other spots on this thing that could use a touch-up, but I'm not really gonna worry about them right now. So first, I'm just gonna wipe some little dust away. Um, the bottom of the hopper here is also pretty bad. Um, as far as where, you know, some lime was in there and then that, you know, impeller was scratching it along the base. Um, I'm not going to worry about trying to paint that. That'd be pretty hard to get to. Um, it's going to just end up doing that same thing again later. But these ones, once I paint them, they should be fine. So first, I'm just going to take some primer. And just do a couple little shot in there on each spot. That's really all you need for primer. Pretty simple. Should flash out pretty quick. Those are light coats. After it tacks up for a second, then just take some green. Spray a little green. Is it as is it as good as a you know good brand new full paint job in there? No, but just for sake of showing, that's it. Um, so that's something you can do if if you really worried about it. Um, most people aren't going to worry about anything like this. I probably wouldn't have just for video's sake. I figured I'd do a quick touch up. And there you have it. That's all you really need to maintain this thing. It's not complicated at all. Um, at least you can see now if you need to get that chain off, um, it's not hard to do. If you need to replace a tine or anything like that, uh, if you break one or bend one real bad, uh, it's not a complicated task. So uh, you don't really need to worry about the wheels. Um, they're a sealed bearing wheel. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, one thing that wouldn't be a bad idea to do uh, is probably like rinse it out after use uh, just to keep... Um, any kind of you know corrosion from happening you know in that hopper if it does get set outside because uh, mine's inside so it doesn't really rust a whole heck of a lot like there's some surface rust but it's not really going to go far beyond that if you use it you know from time to time uh, if it's sitting outside and uh, um, fertilizers and stuff stay in there you know it could it could rust a bit further and uh, really shorten the life of this thing so uh, I know that wasn't, you know, the most fun video out there, but hey, if there was something specific you were looking for, maybe you found it. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.